What's going on, everybody? Z4 here, and today with Combine Weekend coming up, you know, people are, I've seen, actually, the audacity of someone to come in here and say, Z4, where's all the Eagles content? I try my best to have at least one Eagles-specific video out a week, and this week, obviously, with the scouting, the biggest, you know, attraction for the scouting season coming up this weekend, I want to take a look at the top 10 players the Philadelphia Eagles and Eagles fans, more importantly, should be keeping an eye on at the scouting Combine. Um, I think that uh, I am kind of jumping the gun here a little bit, and I am recording this video uh, before really any free agency moves have been made. Uh, so, I mean, it could slightly change depending on... Um, well, fuck, is it free agency's not even open yet, is it? Yeah, so free agency fucking doesn't even open until, I think, next... Like a week from today, actually. I think next Thursday is the first day uh, that the bidding period begins with free agency. So, uh, we should be good from that front. So, yeah, here are the 10 players that I'm going to be most keeping the eye on. The eye on, not both eyes, just the eye, the good eye. Uh, for this upcoming scouting weekend. So I'm not going to talk about the following players because it's pretty much obvious everyone and their dogs will be watching these guys. Dalvin Cook, Mike Williams, Sidney Jones, uh, Tease Tabor, Marilyn Humphrey, and Marshawn Lattimore. I think those guys there, uh, especially considering you know what the Eagles really should target for this year's draft class, being running back, wide receiver, corner. I think those guys those are the big names. And I don't, you don't need me harping at you to watch the, the clear all-stars, the clear most popular players that will be attending the Combine. Uh, so I actually have a bonus. I have 10 guys plus a bonus. A lot of these guys are not going to be, you know, don't expect me to come with some guy that you've never heard of. These are guys that, you know, maybe if you haven't watched any of my videos, they may not be as familiar with you. But for the most part, they have been featured throughout the videos that I've talked about. And, um, you know, I, that's obviously there's a reason why I've talked about them. I'm really interested. And this, this is pretty much the guys I want to watch at the combine. I'm an Eagles fan, so I think you guys uh, should take a keen eye on these players as well. So number 11, the bonus one. Uh, our Darius Stewart, the wide receiver from Alabama. I think he's a surprise entry. He declared really, really late. Kind of a surprise declare. I heard rumors that he was declaring because of some family medical issues, kind of like Peyton Barber last year from Auburn. Uh, so, I mean, that, that, that speaks to his character, I guess, uh, for the positive. I think that'd be a positive trait. But I think a guy like our Darius Stewart could be a sleeper wide receiver that could creep up the rounds. I mean, you saw plenty of talent there in, uh, uh, when he was playing with Alabama. At times, I mean, there's highly regarded wide receiver in Calvin Ridley. Most people are having him as a consensus, almost top 10 pick, potentially, next season there was games where you know really was didn't look all that impressive and it was our Darius Stewart making the plays so I think he's a guy that could be you know I'm not saying like it's really hard right now to kind of say where the Philadelphia Eagles are going to go with their first couple picks but if they're looking maybe second perhaps third round looking at a wide receiver depending on how well our Darius Stewart looks through the drills and how well he tests uh, he could certainly be a prospect to keep your eye on because I am too I'm pretty I'm fairly high fairly high on our Darius Stewart uh, goal number 10 is Devon Gauchot, the defensive tackle from LSU. Uh, this is, you know, again, not sure as I'm recording this what's going on with Benny Logan, but potentially we could replace Benny Logan, that man from LSU, with another very promising defensive tackle from LSU, Gauchot. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. A little bit of Bayou in his name. Uh, a lot of people, you know, pretty much consensus thought he declared a little too early. He probably should have went back for one more year and then came out in the uh, 2018 draft but this guy here project and because he's coming out early usually guys that come out early it affects their draft stock by one or two rounds so he could be a guy that's sitting there in the fourth round maybe in the fifth round we got two fifth round picks which i've kind of been fucking up and all my eagles mock drafts i've been acting like we have two uh two fourth rounders when in reality we have two fifth rounders i don't know where the fuck i got that from i think i saw like actually on eagles.com like the philadelphia eagles website us having uh two fourth round picks on record because i don't know i don't really know but uh, Gauchel is a guy that I think, uh, if he tests fairly well, puts up some nice numbers at the bench press, which unfortunately, uh, usually guys that come out early, they're not as developed and as strong in the bench press as guys that have, you know, an extra two or three years potentially of strength and conditioning programs. But I think Gauchel is athletic enough, very similar to what we have in Benny Logan uh, in an athletic big man. He's definitely got to keep an eye on, especially if the plan is not to re-sign Benny Logan, be it because we have, you know, future plans, they're content with Bo Allen, or we just simply can't match the asking price that other teams are willing to pay. Uh, going number nine is going to be Chad Hansen, the wide receiver from Cal. Currently on most sites, mocked to be a fifth, sixth round prospect, but a lot of guys in the scouting community believe that he will run and test very well at the Combine. I think uh, Daniel Jeremiah has him as a you know, third round pick, as high as a third round pick. Uh, so he's a guy for sure, one of those wide receivers that I think a lot of wide receivers here, it's easy to say, well, dude, if he runs real good 40 time, he's going to be good. But there's a lot of uncertainty right now with the 40 times. With John Ross clearly being the top speedster prospect, how well of a 40 time some of these guys that I'm going to actually talk about the wide receiver position run could very influence their draft stock because everyone i mean remember last year last year at the combine it was like almost a historically low 40 times for all the wide receivers like even the announcers i remember Deion sanders was laughing 
Like, oh my God, these guys are slow. Four fives, four sixes all over the place. Laquan Treadwell. Uh, pretty much everyone, pretty much every wide receiver that wasn't Will Fuller uh, ran. I don't even think Corey Coleman ran. I don't think he did. But I remember Will Fuller had a great 40 time. And outside of that, everyone else was kind of slow. And it, that 40 time probably even helped Will Fuller. He was projected to be a second round pick because he had, uh, you know, pretty much he was the only guy that was considered to be quick. That pretty much got him squeaked into the top half of the, uh, or the top bottom half, sorry, of the first round when the Texans selected him. So guys like Chad Hansen could certainly look to improve their draft stock by running a good 40 time. And he's a guy definitely would be a scheme fit and a need, full of need for the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, goal number eight is going to be Alvin Kamara, the running back from Tennessee. Very polarizing figure among the scouting community because he didn't play a whole lot in Tennessee. He was kind of a luxury specialty player would fill in when Hurd got hurt or would be coming out for different, you know, your pass catching back. Very similar to how we use kind of Darren Sproles. But people are saying that if this guy got a full workload, he would be, you know, considered a lock for a first round pick. That I've seen comparisons to Jamal Charles, this and that. I think a guy like Kamara, who, you know, has very limited tape, has looked good with his tape, uh, having a very strong scouting combine weekend could certainly help his stock. And for the Eagles, he's probably going to be a second round running back. That could be a round that we look at addressing and adding a playmaker in Kamara. Uh, goal number seven is Damonte Kazee. The cornerback from San Diego State projected to be, you know, a fourth, fifth round pick, which is where I think, I firmly believe the Philadelphia Eagles have to select two corners in this upcoming draft. I think a guy like Kazee could totally be that guy. He was a baller for San Diego State. I watched two San Diego State games. Most notably that I can remember at the top of my head was their bowl game where Pumphrey, you know, eventually broke the record. But Kazee was making a bunch of plays. He's small. He's not the biggest guy. So I think if he has an impressive vertical jump and uh, good good 40 time he may slightly be considered more than just a nickel corner in the nfl i think i think he's 511 maybe 510 511 but what the last guy we had that was that size in the philadelphia Eagles secondary was named asante samuel and he wasn't too bad i don't think uh so i think because i'm not comparing him all right to Asante samuel but i think uh he's definitely a guy to keep an eye on for a mid-round corner uh, number six is Jalen Rees Maven, the linebacker from Tennessee. I've had him mocked in, I think, actually all of my Philadelphia Eagle mock drafts. I think he is a guy that brings the pros and cons that we have with Michael Kendricks, especially with Michael Kendricks' future being somewhat up in the air with the Philadelphia Eagles, if they're going to move on from him this offseason or not, or try to trade him, whatever. I think a guy like Jalen Rees Maven, who has had some injury concerns, looks like he got invited to the combine. I don't know exactly what drills he's going to run, but I think... That if he does a 40 time, which really will show in, in just like the, the agility drills and stuff like that, I think it will show his quickness, his speed, uh, and maybe help his draft stock like Michael Kendricks. Michael Kendricks had an excellent scouting combine. I think he probably helped himself by being, you know, really showing off his athleticism, probably helped him gain a round or two uh, when he got, came out of uh, the University of California. Uh, going to number five is Cooper Cup, the wide receiver from Eastern Washington. I have him very similar to Chad Hansen. A lot of people in the scouting community, I mean, already have Cooper Cup who dominated the senior bowl, which is already helping his draft stock. But a lot of people think that his 40 time is going to be very quick. They think he's going to run low 4 fours, which for him, for a guy that has the production, the great hands, the great route running, you know, doesn't use his body to catch his passes. You can go downfield, beat his man, shifty, agility, all those things you want that's not in, you know, the stereotypical white wide receiver. He's not a gym rat. He's not scrappy. He's not a student of the game or anything like that. If this guy runs as good a 40 time as people are saying he may be a top half of the second round pick if some team falls in love with him that could be the philadelphia eagles especially if we decide to dress the cornerback spot with our first round pick i think wide receiver has to be the next logical option in the second round and cup could be that guy you know getting in the mold of carson wentz you don't always need to get the prospect like our darius stewart or fucking mike williams any of these guys that come from big schools carson wentz showed that small school prospects can make big time impacts in the nfl uh, goal number four, sticking with the wide receiver position, we have Amba Edatawo, the wide receiver from Syracuse. This guy here strictly because of his 40 time. If he runs a good 40 time, he can help his draft stock right, like a lot. A lot of people right now are saying he's going to be slow as a fucking slug. He's like 5'6", or 4'6", 4'5", high 5, high 5, fuck, high 4'5". Low 4-6. Could potentially be his 40-yard time. He's excellent hands. Had a phenomenal, phenomenal production last year with Syracuse uh, in a fairly uh, high-octane pass offense. Uh, but I think he's another guy. Keep an eye on. Could be, you know, fourth-round pick, third, fourth-round pick. Uh, I think I think he will be a guy that will excel in the pass-catching drills because he has phenomenal hands. But if he can help himself with a 40-yard time, definitely a guy to keep an eye on at the wide receiver position. 
Uh, number three is Corn Elder, the corner from Miami. I had him mocked to the Philadelphia Eagles in the fourth round of the last thing. Again, uh, another guy needs to needs to just show his athleticism. I mean, you look at the tape, you see a scrappy fighter. You see a guy that, you know, obviously he's undersized. He's like 5'10", 188. Will probably most likely be a nickel corner. But that would be that's a fit. We kind of need that for Philadelphia. So if he can test well, hopefully he doesn't test too, too well. So he still will be available in the mid rounds for us to select. But he's definitely a guy I'm keeping an eye on. He's a prospect I like. Same goes for my number two is Razul Douglas, the cornerback from West Virginia. Had a phenomenal year statistically at West Virginia. I think he has the tools and traits that Jim Swartz would like in a corner for his defense. But he's another guy that people, kind of like Jalen Mills, are worried about his top end speed. They think he can get beat by burners down the field. So he's a guy that most importantly, you know, it sounds almost, you know, unintelligent to say oh there he got run good forty time got come off fast he's a guy that would definitely improve his draft stock with a 40 time because speed is the big concern right now with Rasul Douglas that he's more rangy than quick and the number one prospect for us to keep an eye on Eagle fans at the combine 100 percent is Zay Jones the wide receiver from East Carolina currently projected to be a late second round most I'd say right now before the combine I think he'll be a early third round pick um that's with the Philadelphia Eagles. We don't decide not to go after Corey Davis, the guy that I think we should get in the first round. Zay Jones then becomes my favorite prospect for us to get because, you know, right now the question on Zay Jones is his quickness, his quickness off the line, his burst off the line, getting separation with his speed. If he runs a good 40 time, very similar to Brazil Douglas, he can improve his draft stock tenfold, absolutely tenfold because I think he probably has the best hands in this year's draft class. His stats that he put up at ECU were literally like a fucking, I already said it, I said it in my live stream uh, a couple weeks ago. His stats are literally like a kid playing Madden on rookie. It's he, his, he was incredible, absolutely incredible. And then everyone thought, you know, oh, geez, he's just a guy, you know, from an air raid gimmicky offense playing in fear competition. He dominated the senior bull. He, he had two touchdowns that were brilliant, both called back. He made all the difficult third down catches. He is exactly what we need. We need what the Philadelphia Eagles have struggled with wide receivers that have fucking not bricks for hands. Zay Jones would be a breath of fresh air to add that at wide receiver core. I think even if he runs sub 4-5 if he can get even a 4-4-9 I think he's a for sure if he's not already a lock for the second round so he's definitely a prospect that I really want to keep an eye on uh and just in case Philadelphia decided to go maybe corner or something like the corner or running back I guess in the first round uh, Zane Jones would definitely be my favorite prospect for us to look at in the second and or third round so there you have guys those are the top 10 guys I think Eagle fans should try to pay attention to at the scouting combine if you agree or disagree let me know in the comment section below about guys that maybe I've missed that I should keep an eye on I couldn't mention them all there's plenty more prospects I could have talked about but just for the sake of the top 10 uh, this is who I included if this is your first time stopping by don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button smash the like button if you enjoyed and then I'll catch you guys later enjoy the combine fellas